Hey folks, I still got Vegas on my mind, specifically Vegas December 3rd and 4th, uh, where we're having our two workshops, December 3rd, our frozen shoulder workshop, and December 4th, our common foot injuries workshop. And I am at Mr. Otto's shoulder joint. And December 3rd, I'm going to show you some great techniques and approaches that I take uh, to work with my clients who have frozen shoulder. Uh, frozen shoulder is one of these things that is actually uh, uh, pretty common and I think coming out of the pandemic I started to see a lot more people with shoulder uh, issues and conditions um, probably related to a lot of uh, more sedentary lifestyles sitting in front of the computer all of that stuff uh, from what they tell me so uh, given that I want to show you some uh, techniques in, uh, in our workshop, but today I want to show you just kind of how I approach uh, frozen shoulder and I really utilize a lot of the concepts of palpation that are part of the Morales method. And again, if you are not familiar with those concepts, we have a great free online course uh, called Concepts of Palpation that goes through and describes uh, how we work the tissue and how we, uh, all the variations in working with tissue want to show you one example. Let's say we have Mr. Otto here and let's say he's got frozen shoulder. Maybe he can't abduct as well as uh, uh, the rest of us. And what I'll do is I won't push past their, their range limitations and I might end up working uh, however they can. Let's say Mr. Otto is okay having his arm over his side like that and I might start to work then um, Terry's minor and Terry's major and just FYI in the workshop we're going to go through assessments to figure out exactly where to work and what to work. So let's say for example we have to work the Terry's minor major area and I might work just like this palpating feeling for directional resistance and then I might go through a passive shortening uh, um, technique in order to shorten the tissue and work it. And let's say my left hand fingers are now working in the direction of resistance. Let's say for example it's this way and I might shorten Mr. Otto's Terry's minor by bringing the arm closer. Invariably a lot of these times we'll feel a muscle twitch, some type of muscle contraction and decontraction. The hope is that that's indicative of a greater range of motion once we reassess. So this is what it would look like, like so. I might even work the pec major and again feeling for directional resistance I might do a passive shortening. When I work with shoulder issues and shoulder conditions, I'm going to put her, uh, Mr. Otto's arm like this, so hopefully it'll come out in camera. When I work with uh, shoulder conditions, I do a lot of passive shortening. I don't necessarily do a lot of passive lengthening, and I'll talk more about that in the workshop. And I may vary between directional resistance and directional ease, and again, I'll uh, go into that in the workshop. So just a quick indicator, just a quick little demo of how I would work this area. Bringing Mr. Otto's arm back as I'm doing a passive shortening in this location. So I'm showing the work here in supine, but you can absolutely work this in prone. I'll show it in the workshop in prone. And you can also work in sideline position. That's a great way to work in uh, um, this whole kind of side area in sideline position. I tend to do my work either in prone or in supine. This is a great angle to show you, which is why I picked it uh, in supine. This is also a great way to work subscapularis as well, but you can also work subscap in sideline position. That's it, folks. Thanks again for watching. I hope this helped, and I hope to see you in Vegas December 3rd and 4th.